Anna Kaisa Hedaniemi. Um, Anna is a specialist, a leading specialist in Finland's largest child welfare organization, the Mannerheim League for Child Welfare. She's responsible for the development and overall management of this organization's peer support student program. And this bullying prevention program has been extensively evaluated, well acknowledged, and is currently implemented in 93% of Finnish high schools. And Anna's uh, title of presentation is The Power of Peers, Youth Participation in Bullying Prevention. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, just before we headed out to have a lunch, we had a wonderful presentation from the Danish who told us or gave us brilliant insights on how the school culture either enables or hinders bullying. After that, Sarah was talking about uh, how the harmful norms, um, why, why we have harmful norms in the schools and why they should be challenged. So I feel that I am in a great place to continue from there. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about why it is not only smart, but almost mandatory to involve the young people uh, in the school's bullying preventions in order to build a genuine counter-bullying school culture where bullying is not accepted and the students become architects of their own well-being. Uh, with this talk, I'm going to go first briefly through some statistics picturing the bullying situation in Finland. And after that, I'm going to walk you through the benefits of involving youth in bullying prevention. And in the end, I'm going to share our experiences in the National Bullying Prevention Program called Peer Support Program. So that is the plan. And I think we're good to go. Uh, I will start with this quote from a young person who has shared their experience on uh, MLL's Usenet online forum. I will let you read through that. These are the kind of experiences that leave us speechless. However, this is the reality for thousands of young people every single day. These kind of experiences should not paralyze us, but quite opposite. They should wake us up and make us take an action. In Finland, bullying is an issue that is not hushed down actually quite opposite. It seems to make the headlines almost every single week. Despite the fact that bullying is greatly discussed over the years, the statistics in Finland still look like this. As you can see, we had quite a good trend going on for almost 10 years. The bullying seemed to be diminishing, but then this very good trend stopped and partly reversed. At the moment, those who are uh, experiencing bullying, at least weekly, um, there are almost every tenth student in the year four and five and eight and nine. When we look at the figures of the boys, the figures have come back to the same level as it was in year 2010, and for the girls, the numbers are bigger than ever in a measurement history. Uh, Finland has a bit of a reputation of being a tech-savvy nation. Uh, I think that we actually use the most mobile data per capita in the world. Most of the young people get their first smartphones during the first years of primary school. 
and unfortunately, their technical skills do not align with their online behavioral skills. MLL conducted a survey early on this year, and according to this survey, 40% of the students claim that they have seen someone from their school being bullied online. Also, 9% say that they have, they have been bullied online uh, by someone from their school. I think that this illustrates how we cannot separate the online bullying and the bullying happening in the schools. Quite often, when a person gets bullied in the school, the bullying continues after the school online. Uh, this is another graph. This is also from the National Student Health uh, Survey. The survey is taken every second year in Finland. Uh, this graph tells about the young people who are feeling lonely. And um, as we know, the pandemic years were tough for many of us, and the students' experiences on loneliness skyrocketed. However, many of us hoped that as the situation would improve and the uh, restrictions were lifted, the numbers would come down again. However, that did not happen and the numbers have not returned back to the pre-COVID level. We know that bullying and loneliness are a bit of a vicious couple. They seem to go hand in hand. Quite often, the students who feel lonely they also tend to be bullied. Or sometimes a student who feels lonely reacts to the loneliness by bullying the others. It is quite evident that we're dealing with a massive problem and we need to seek for solutions together. It is not enough that we make fancy fancy plans on an administrative level. Bullying prevention is a shared worry, and we cannot, be, we cannot solve that unless the students, the school personnel, and the parents are engaged. We'll wait. There we go. Okay, uh, let's move on to why it is important to engage the young people. Traditionally, the bullying prevention actions have been quite a lot adult-led. However, I argue that the youth participation and the cooperation with the students and the school personnel is a key element to the successful bullying prevention. Uh, let me elaborate a bit on this. Um, I think that participation creates motivation. Through the participation, students become motivated to take responsibility for the atmosphere. Now it's doing something funny. Let's go back. Um, the students are motivated to take the responsibility for the atmosphere of their own school, and they are in power to influence the factors affecting their own well-being. Uh, when we're talking about the anti-bullying actions in schools, we're quite often referring to the importance of creating anti-bullying culture in schools. What I mean by that is the sort of the school culture where bullying is not accepted. Um, it's not accepted way to gain power within the peers, and it is the norm that the bullying cases are reported to the school personnel. However, quite often, um, even though the schools have the school rules that the bullying is not accepted, <coughs> this is not reality in the schools. And quite often when I talk to the students, the students that tell that if I go and tell about the bullying to an adult, I'm referred as a snitch. And that's the kind of a prison terminology that is very negative. Uh, norms, as in what is normal or accepted as a normal behavior, are 
maintained and also recreated within the youth. And therefore, it is important that the students are engaged in creating the new defending norms when bullying becomes disapproved. As we know, unfortunately, a lot of bullying cases are invisible for the school personnel. And quite often, it takes some time before the adults or teachers know what is going on. I think that especially in high schools, when the teachers see the students an hour here, another one there, it is quite hard to make a decent understanding on their social relations within the youth. Uh, sometimes it is quite hard to notice if the student is constantly socially excluded or if something that seems to be roasting is done within the good terms, within a group of friends, or whether it's something more serious. We've noticed that quite often the students have a better understanding on relations amongst the students, and they can better tell if someone is left out or being mistreated. When the norm is changed, so that the reporting the mistreating or bullying to an adult is referred as a kind of act, uh, as an act of kindness, not snitching. The bullying cases are intervened sooner, and the bullying is more likely to be stopped. I think that one of the shining examples of engaging youth in the bullying prevention is MLL's peer support program. The program empowers students to support their peers, foster positive relations, and uphold anti-bullying norms. Through the peer-led initiatives, students become the architects of change within their own schools. The program not only addresses the bullying incidents, but also promotes a sense of belonging and inclusivity among students. Uh, peer support activities, they have a long tradition in Finland. Initially, in 1972, when MLL brought the program from USA, it was focused on substance abuse prevention. Over the time, the emphasis on the program has shifted and the program has concentrated on the issues that matter to the youth of that time. For the last 10 years, the focus has been on bullying and loneliness prevention. However, the idea of peer support and the peer influence has remained from the very early years. Today, the program is implemented in 93% of the Finnish high schools, which is years seven to nine. Uh, the peer students, they're just normal students that want to make a difference and to influence on their own school environment, to act for a safer school and to make sure that no one is left alone. There's approximately 11,000 students and 1,000 instructors who are involved in a program every single year. We think that peer supporters are a tremendous asset that should not be overlooked. They act on all the stages of the bullying prevention. Their role is mainly on the preventive side, but they can also have a significant role in noticing bullying and supporting the bullied individual. Let's take a closer look on what kind of a roles the peer students have on different stages of anti-bullying work. We'll start with the block of preventive actions. Uh, as we discussed earlier, the peer supporters are the ones that can challenge the current norms. And by setting an example, they create a new anti-bullying norms. Peer supporters build an inclusive and anti-bullying school culture they're trained to lead by an example and to create a culture where students greet each other in the hallways, invite those who are left alone to join the activities 
and to talk to each other in a respective manner. Peer supporters also have important role in building connections with the students and helping students to get to know each other. In many schools, the peer supporters uh, are involved in welcoming the new students, the seventh graders, and they also quite often take care of the students who change schools in the middle of the school year. The peer support activities are not limited just to the beginning of the school year, but throughout the year, uh, they uh, are holding different kind of recess activities and uh, arranging various events. These might be fun activities, but they are actually a lot more as well. Through the fun activities done together, a positive and safe atmosphere is built and the students get to know each other and all of this is preventive work at the same time of course. Uh, when people get to know each other there is a much higher threshold for bullying and treating others poorly. Let's move on to the identifying and noticing it must be stressed that solving the bullying incidents is always the responsibility of the adults. But the peer supporters can play a significant role in noticing bullying. According to MLL's wellbeing survey, up to 40% of the students who have been bullied reported that the adults in their school do not know about it. Bullying often involves a lot of shame and it might be difficult to go to talk to an adult and to tell about the bullying that they have experienced. The peer supporters, they can relay the messages and to tell the adults what they have witnessed, but they can also um, encourage and help the bullied to go and tell about their experiences to the adults. Uh, quite often, the bullying cases can be intervened sooner, and we know that the sooner we, we intervene the bullying, the better chances we have to solve them as well. Then, moving over to intervening and supporting. Uh, peer supporters, they are trained and encouraged to intervene in bullying when it is safe. 89% uh, of the peer supporters tell that they have intervened in bullying when they have witnessed such. Intervening can be different things. It can be, for example, telling the bullies to stop. It can be helping the bullied out of the situation or it can be fetching an adult. Uh, when it comes to supporting, after the bullying, peer supporters can help by showing social and emotional support to the victim. In the end, I'd like to present some survey and research results from the peer support program. As a part of our program management, we run our own annual assessments, but in addition to this, there has been a wider national evaluation a couple of years ago. Uh, this is a graph from our annual peer support survey. The peer supporters were asked what they feel that they can achieve through the program. And as this craft shows, the peer students themselves feel that the program is effective and that their actions have effect on, for example, creating a safe and inclusive atmosphere, helping the students to get to know each other, or preventing bullying. These two crafts are from MLL's Wellbeing Summary Report that was conducted in 2021. It's based on uh, MLL's well-being uh, well survey. 
that has a large set of questions, but some of them also are related to peer support. When we look at the graph on the left, it indicates the support that the bullied person has received from the other students. We know that when we move further on a school level, the bullying cases decrease, but also the cases are more severe. At the same time, unfortunately, the support offered by the other peers do diminish. However, when the bullied is supported by their peers, the support is greatly valued. Then the graph on the right shows us how the peer support students as well as the students with the personal bullying experience are the ones who most likely support someone being bullied. This graph is also from MLS Wellbeing Summary Report, and the graph shows what sort of help the peer has offered when it has been experienced helpful. And as we can see, the support offered is very versatile. In high schools, the emotional support offered by the peer is particularly meaningful. The emotional support can be anything from someone coming to sit next to you, or asking how you are, or showing support through gestures and expressions. Now, few words from the results from the um, big national survey. Uh, in addition to MLL's own surveys, the peer pro support program has been evaluated in a wider evaluation. Uh, peer support program was one of the seven methods that was selected to be evaluated in the national evaluation of the methods that prevent bullying and improve well-being and working atmosphere in schools. In this evaluation, the methods were examined from the perspectives of usability, sustainability, and effectiveness. The evaluation report states that the peer support program is effective and it supports the other anti-bullying programs in schools. It especially fosters the community spirit and the student participation. Uh, peer support program was considered strong in all of these three perspectives, usability, sustainability, and effectiveness. From the usability perspective, the program strength is that it is very compatible with the national curricula. It is quite easy to implement, and there are plenty of materials, training, and also regional support for the teachers. Uh, in addition to this, it is definitely an advantage that the program can be customized into schools' needs. Furthermore, the program has long traditions, and it has created its own position as being a part of school culture. Uh, also, the method's clarity and simplicity enhance its sustainability. So the schools use the same method year after year. When we look in from the um, effectiveness perspective, the strength lies in the fact that the results are easily seen and visible in the everyday school life. When the students feel good at school, it is reflected in a school satisfaction, work peace, as well as learning outcomes. Then, finally, even though the peer support student program has been proven to be effective, um, an effective bullying prevention program, here comes the disclaimer. It is not a magic, magical counterstroke that will change everything overnight. Here are a few things that need to take into consideration if you wish to make things work. First, the safe school environment isn't created overnight.
The program must be implemented as it is designed to. You can't take bits and pieces from here and there. You have to implement the whole program. It also has to be done in a long-term and goal-oriented manner. Second, it is important to engage the whole school community, including the parents, the school personnel, as well as the uh, students. And they all have to have a shared commitment to the bullying prevention. The whole school community must be informed on the program and its objectives. And equally important it is that everyone knows who the peer students are and what can be expected from them. We know that the best anti-bullying work is the preventing bullying situations. The safe school environment where everyone can be seen, heard, and accepted as themselves, and where reporting mistreatments are valued, that's a great start. I lost my mouse. <laughs> That's all right. We'll go on a traditional way. That's all right. I've got my papers. No worries. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we were up to the training level. It is important that the peer supporters have a clear understanding on their role. And it is, as I said, it must be emphasized that they are not the ones to solve the problems or solve the bullying cases. Uh, the most important things are the little things that the peer supporters do every, way, every day by setting an example and creating the positive and safe school atmosphere. Uh, training of the peer supporters uh, cannot be addressed enough. It is not easy to act when witnessing bullying, and this must be practiced. It is also important to remember that the peer supporters need support themselves. Behind every great peer supporter, there is also an inspiring instructor. Um, then the fifth point. The key element of the program is the youth participation. Young people hold on to the knowledge that we, as an adults, cannot hold on to. So we have to be brave and to listen to the young people for what they think that should be done so that no one is left alone. And finally, it is important to gather information and follow up. The regular evaluation helps us to focus the activities on the right things. I'll end this talk with this quote from one of our peer support students. I think that this highlights the true essence of the program. You, the young people have the hands-on knowledge on what is relevant to the students. They know how the safe and welcoming school atmosphere is created, and they hold on to the motivation to work towards it. So today, I will leave you with a challenge. Let's empower our youth to be the architects for the brighter and kinder future. Together, we can make a difference, one act of kindness at a time. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Peace Support Program, there's a website with more information on English, and there's also my contacts, so please feel free to contact me. Thank you. <laughs>